Hello, hello. I'm really, really excited about today's video because it is a collaboration with the gorgeous Mrs. Melissa M. I have been a huge fan of her channel for several years now, so I jumped at the opportunity to collaborate with her. If you are watching this video, I'm quite sure you're already very, very familiar with her channel. She is so prolific here on YouTube. She covers everything from drugstore to high-end makeup, lots of skincare, her recommendations, tips, and techniques are always spot on. So after you finish watching this video, please make sure you go and visit Mrs. Melissa M and give her my love. Her channel and her video are listed and linked in the description box below. And if you are new here visiting from Mrs. Melissa M's channel, a very warm welcome to you. All right, let's play with some cream makeup. But before we do, I have got to get my hair up. I am so overdue for a haircut. And it's driving me crazy. Okay, the first step of my makeup application is always the same. You are not gonna be surprised to hear me say the Pixie Peach Corrector. I have talked about this for a very long time. It is holy grail. I absolutely love it. It is exactly what it says. It is a peach colored corrector. A corrector will cancel and neutralize those blue purple tones under the eye. You can see I have hit a little bit of pan there. I've had this for about a year and a half. It's still going strong. Um, it hasn't dried out or anything. The consistency is still really good, so it's a really great value. But while we're talking cream correctors, I do want to share with you a couple of other correctors I have tried in the past six months. I picked up the Charlotte Tilbury Peach Corrector. I've heard such great things about it. Beautiful packaging. There is what it looks like. And I also picked up the Bobbi Brown Corrector. And again, that's in a nice little pot. So here is the Charlotte Tilbury Peach Corrector. And here is the Bobbi Brown Peach Corrector. There is the Pixie. This is the Charlotte Tilbury. And that is the Bobbi Brown. I probably should have purchased the Charlotte Tilbury in the light tone might be a little deep on my skin. As far as which of the three I prefer, I still prefer the Pixie Peach Corrector, which is a great thing because it's like one third of the price. But what I will say about the Charlotte Tilbury is it's a little bit more emollient than the Pixie Peach Corrector and a little bit more slippy. I really do enjoy the application of this. Same thing with the Bobbi Brown, slightly more emollient. The reason I really do prefer the Pixie Peach Corrector is it's more opaque. It takes less product to get that neutralization. Anyway, so I want to share with you that, you know, I have tried some other products besides the Pixie Peach Corrector, Bobbi Brown, Charlotte Tilbury, both great products. Many people love them. Thank goodness I prefer the affordable drugstore price corrector. Anyway, as usual, I go in with my Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush. You know, many people don't like the fact that this is in a pot because getting your finger in there can be a little tricky, but that is where this handy dandy little um, brush comes in. And again, a corrector, I only pretty much apply it to the actual blue purple areas. You've seen me do this before. Anyway, this Real Techniques brush just fits into that little deep hole so perfectly. And I just sort of pat it on. I'm really only, like I said, only applying it to the very blue areas. I'm not going all over my under eye. I do like to use it as a little bit of an eyeshadow primer. Sort of neutralizes the discoloration on my eyelid as well. And then I will just take my finger and pat it in. Side note. Some people have reported that they find the Pixie Peach Corrector to be a little bit drying. I really haven't found that to be the case, even though my 62 year old under eyes are very dry. But most days I do prehydrate my under eyes with my Kiehl's Creamy Avocado Eye Treatment. I just put a little dab of this on under my eyes, probably a half an hour to 45 minutes before I do my makeup. And that may be one of the reasons I don't find the Pixie Peach Corrector to be drying at all. Okay, 
So can you see the difference? This is the corrected eye and that is the not corrected eye. Okay, let's do this side. Again, I just love this brush for getting into that. It's sort of almost like a hole. It's really deep. And it's even hard to get my finger in there correctly, especially when I have nails, which I don't right now because I cut them all off the other day. Again, I just use a light layer on the eyelids as an eyeshadow primer, and then I just pat that in. Okay, you can see it's nicely corrected with minimal product. The reason I like to use a corrector is because it takes quite a bit of concealer to cover the blue purple, whereas it only takes a little bit of corrector to cancel or neutralize out the blue purple. I hope that makes sense. The next step of my makeup is foundation. Believe it or not, I have never tried a cream foundation. I've always perceived them to be heavy, cakey, you know, sort of like the old pancake makeup, but this is a cream makeup video, so I really wanted to find a cream foundation. So I started exploring and reading reviews, and I became very, very interested in the newer Merit Cream Foundation Stick. That is on order. Unfortunately, it has not arrived in time for this video. So back to Ulta I went, I wanted to find a more affordable cream foundation. Believe it or not, I could only find one affordable cream foundation on the drugstore side, and that is the CoverGirl Plus Olay Simply Ageless Cream Foundation. This has, it is a foundation with titanium dioxide sunscreen. It has a broad spectrum SPF of 28. We know we cannot rely on our foundation as our SPF. I always wear a full face of dedicated sunscreen but a little SPF doesn't hurt in a foundation, especially when it's titanium dioxide. I really like the fact that it's mineral sunscreen. That is the type of sunscreen I generally prefer. But what I really do like about this is it does have some really nice skincare ingredients in it. It has niacinamide pretty high up on the ingredient list, panthenol, which is a very emollient ingredient, hyaluronic acid complex, vitamin E, even though the label says vitamin C, I really couldn't find a vitamin C ingredient on the ingredient list, so I'm a little confused by that. It comes in 11 or 12 shades. Like I said, my shade is in 225 Buff Beige. This has a beautiful, slippy, creamy, hydrating feeling to it. It comes with this little pad, this little pad, this little pad, but I haven't used that. I, I'm just really not into pads like that. Anyway, let's get this on my face. I have worn it for the past couple of days and I really am enjoying it. I apply it with my fingers and then I'll blend it in with a brush. So I just dab it around. I could blend it with my fingers. It does blend very, very smoothly and easily. You see that? Maybe I'll do my fingers on one side and the brush on the other. I mean, look at that. It does blend effortlessly. And I'm not gonna wear any concealer today. I'm just going to take a light layer of foundation under my eyes to sort of get rid of that peachy tint with the peach corrector. Like I said, I'm going to do half my face with my fingers so you can see the coverage. Let me check my blend here. Oh, I have a little pimple starting on my lip there. I don't typically get pimples, but we all get them every once in a while, don't we? Okay, I think you can see how easy that blended in. So that is one side. And that is the other. So like I said, on the other side, I'm gonna use a brush to blend it in. I'm gonna use my BK Beauty, I think 106, yes. I'm gonna pick up a little foundation and apply it with a brush. It blends easily no matter what method you use.
You know, I always use a damp sponge as a final step in blending just to make sure I have the foundation, you know, merged and pushed seamlessly into the skin. Okay, the foundation is super easy to blend. Now, it doesn't feel tacky, but it doesn't feel velvety dry either. It feels sort of like a moisturizer. I think the finish is a natural skin-like finish. I wouldn't call it matte and I wouldn't call it radiant. What do you think? All right, so that is the CoverGirl Plus Olay Simply Ageless Cream Foundation. I am surprised how much I like this. It's easy to apply. Like I said, I've worn it for the past couple of days. I find it wears just fine on my skin. You know, typically foundation does tend to last quite a while on my skin. I don't have a lot of problems in general with foundation breaking down on my skin. No polka dot pores, doesn't settle into lines and wrinkles. This is really, really nice. I'm very happy I found it. Okay, next up is bronzer. I only have one cream bronzer and it is the Milk Makeup Cream Bronzing Stick in the color Baked. Let me show you what that looks like. Oh, it looks so dark on my finger, but what I do like about this is it is a pretty neutral bronzer. It is not overly warm. It blends really well. It does not look that dark on the face, although I am going to put it between my fingers. I probably picked up too heavy of a swatch, and then we'll just sort of pat it around. Pat it around. Actually, I'm gonna pick up a little bit with my e.l.f. putty. I can't remember what brush this is, but it's a really nice brush. Take a little bit off on my wrist so I don't overload it. And then I will just warm up my face with the cream bronzer. I'm not trying to look sun-kissed by any means, but a little cream, a little cream bronzer just to warm up the face. You know, when you apply foundation and you get sort of a uniform monochromatic look on your face, it can look a little unnatural. And that's where just a little bit of bronzer comes in just to give your face a little bit sort of natural tonal variation. I'm not sculpting. Nature has sculpted for me as I lose volume in my face. And this does not pick up the foundation under it. These two products blend very nicely together. I am gonna take a little bit on my jawline, see if I can't soften those jowls. And maybe even a little bit under the chin. So that's the bronzer. Now I typically don't use bronzer every day, but I really did want to show you a cream bronzer. I only have one cream bronzer, as you know, it is the Milk Makeup Cream Bronzer in the shade Baked. It is a matte cream bronzer. I very much like it. You saw how easy it was to apply. If this is a product that's interesting to you, I have the full size. Boy, do I wish I had gotten the mini because I will never ever use this up. This will last me literally for the rest of my life. The mini would last me a long time too. So if this is something that interests you, grab the mini. Okay, cream blush. You have heard me talk about my number one favorite cream blush so many times. It's the Milani Cheek Kiss, especially the color Nude Kiss. This is just one of my go-to cream blushes that I absolutely love but I didn't want to talk about the same cream blush all the time, so I did pick up a new cream blush at the Sephora sale. I picked up the Fenty Cream Blush, and this is in the shade Summer Wine. Oh my gosh, the color scares me a little bit. You know, when I'm buying blushes, I tend to always go for this nudie, dusty rose. And I thought, oh, I should try a different color. But as I've been playing with this Fenty blush, it's pretty vibrant on my skin. But we're gonna play with it anyway. It's probably gonna give me <laughs> aspen cheeks, but it's, it's a really pretty blush. I do like the formula very, very much. It's very slippy, very, very easy to blend. There is this, yeah, that's scary. It's a little, it's a little brighter than I, I don't know. We're gonna try and make it work. It's very, very pigmented. 
So when I have been applying this, I just pick up the tiniest little bit, dab a little bit off, and then go in. It does blend in really easily, even though it is a very, very bright color. And keep in mind, it looks brighter in person than it does on camera. But I think you can see how easy that was to blend in. We'll do the other side. Again, I dab a little bit off because this is a very, very intense shade. This reminds me more of like rouge that my mom used to wear and call rouge. I don't know, what do you think? It's not really my comfort zone color. Whoops, see, now I went in a little too heavy. And as you know, I always apply blush pretty high up on my cheeks and into my temple to give a little bit of a lifted look. Uh-oh, I'm going too, too heavy on the blush here. I'm gonna show you how to fix that. If you find that you've gone too heavy on a cream blush, take your foundation brush and just buff around the edges. That helped. That can really tone down a blush. Same thing with powder blush. If you have gone in too heavy with a powder blush, just take a little uh, neutral powder and buff around the edges. Okay, that is the cream blush. All right, moving on. Let's move on to the eyes, the fun part. I have really been having fun exploring cream eyeshadows, pots, crayons, sticks. I did a one and done eyeshadow video a couple of months ago that was in collaboration with the Hooded Lid. My gosh, I fell absolutely in love with the Charlotte Tilbury Eyes to Mesmerize. I have it in the shade Oyster Pearl. You've seen me wear that before. Revlon made a beautiful, beautiful cream eyeshadow. But today we're gonna do eye crayons. And I picked up a couple of new eye crayons at the Sephora sale. And I picked up the Bobbi Brown Soho Trio. It was three minis. And I will swatch these shades for you. It comes in three shades. Uh, golden pink, golden bronze, and dusty mauve. Here is the golden pink, golden bronze, dusty mauve. And that green is the Sephora brand in the shade khaki. So we are going to do a super, super simple eye look today. I have worn these. They are very long lasting. They are very easy to apply. We're just going to do a really simple look with the gold pink, golden pink, so I'm just applying a little bit of this to the inner half of my eyelid. This golden pink. It is a little bit of a shimmer. It's not a real metallic shimmer. It's more of a soft satin sheen. You can see that. And then I'm just gonna take my finger and just sort of pat it in place. Pat it in place. You have about a minute, 45 seconds or a minute to blend it either with your finger or a brush. And after that, it is budge proof. It is not going anywhere. And then I'm gonna take the Sephora brand Olive, I think it was called, and we're gonna deepen up the outer corner with this. This is much deeper and darker, so I'm gonna try and be pretty light-handed with this and blend it in with my uh, BK Beauty brush here just to move it around a little bit. Just a little bit up into the crease. See that? Super, super, super easy. Again, with these deeper colors, you don't need to apply very much. You just apply it where you want it and then blend it with a brush. I get it even. Are we looking pretty even here? Very, very simple eye look. You know, I might take a little bit of my cream bronzer and just apply that in the transition area just for a little bit of depth. 
might not even show up on camera, but I think that will give me a little bit of depth in the transition area. It's an old trick, right? The old bronzer in the transition area trick. Okay, that's the eyeshadow look. Really easy, really basic, a little bit of golden pink shimmer in the inner corner and a little bit of khaki green on the outer corner, a little bit of bronzer in the crease area, good to go. I'm gonna go off camera, do my eyebrows, do my eyelashes, and then we'll come back and we will finish up with lipstick. All right, I'm back. Eyebrows are on, eyelashes are on. Of course, I used all the usual suspects, my L'Oreal Le Liner in the shade Denim Brown in the tight line. I used my Sephora Retractable Waterproof Eye Pencil in the shade Shimmering Taupe on the lower lash line, my L'Oreal Le Eyelash Primer, Lancome Monsieur Big Mascara, and on my lower lashes, I did use the MAC Extend to Play um, tubing mascara. A tubing mascara does not smudge. And so by using a tubing mascara on my lower lashes, I can get a little bit of lower lash definition without worrying about raccoon eyes. And this MAC has just this beautiful tiny little brush, making it just super easy just to touch those lower lashes for a little bit of definition. And then for brows, I used my new favorite, the Kosas Air Brow. I love this stuff. It tints, it volumizes, it thickens, it holds my brows in place without being stiff or crunchy. It conditions your brow hairs and it has some ingredients that are supposed to help our brow hairs grow. So I'm really hoping that this can help my, you know, maybe grow the tails of my eyebrows in a little bit. I'm really enjoying that. Let's throw a little lipstick on and then we will be good to go. I'm gonna use my um, Lisa Eldridge. This is the lipstick called Painterly. This is not a velvet formula, it is her luminous formula. And it is such a pretty shade for fall. Luxuriously lucent, I think she calls it. What is that, sort of a brownie rosewood? I don't know, I think it's a really pretty shade for fall. All right, final thoughts on my full face of cream cosmetics. I don't need to go on and on about the Pixie Peach Corrector. You know how much I love my Pixie Peach Corrector. I was really very pleasantly surprised at how much I enjoyed this CoverGirl Plus Olay Cream Foundation. I found a good color match in the 225 Buff Natural. I think it looks very natural on the skin. It applied easily, it blended beautifully. It did not require powdering at all. Actually, I feel like it's veering a little bit on the matte side right now. Maybe my skin is a little bit drier today than in previous days. In previous days, I felt like it had a little bit of a radiant finish, but I'm feeling like it's not looking quite radiant enough right now. So let's put a little Charlotte Tilbury Hollywood Flawless Filter on. You know, I just love this stuff. I just love it. And I feel like I need just a little bit more glow. Even though it's not technically a cream product, right? There, that makes me happy. I would not call the CoverGirl any kind of a glowy foundation. I would say it is a almost a matte foundation, which is generally not my preference but it's not a heavy cakey matte. Okay, glowy enough now? Okay, that made me happy. Bronzer. I love my Milk Makeup Cream Bronzing Stick in the color Baked. This is a good one. It is a neutral tone, not overly warm, blends very easily. If you're interested in this, make sure you pick up the mini. I will never use this whole thing up. Cream Blush. It was really fun to try the Fenty Cream Blush. Beautiful color, a little bit bright for my usual preference. I'm a little bit out of my comfort zone with that. But you know, I might try mixing it one of these days with my Milani Silky Matte in the color Cheek Kiss. That might tone it down a little bit. 
it was fun trying the Fenty, but oh my gosh, you guys, Milani has my heart. I just think that is an amazing cream blush. And now Milani, my understanding is they have come out with a cream blush trio. I'm very interested in that one, but I don't need any more cream blush for a while. And lastly, eyes. I think we got a really pretty look with just two cream eyeshadow sticks. The Bobbi Brown eyeshadow stick in golden pink and then the Sephora brand eyeshadow stick in khaki. Look how pretty that turned out and you saw how fast and easy it was to do. This eyeshadow is not going anywhere. Once these cream eyeshadow sticks set down, they don't budge. They are budge proof. Okay, all right, we did it. I hope you enjoyed my full face of cream makeup. Please make sure you go and visit Mrs. Melissa M. Her channel and her video are linked in the description box below. I cannot wait to see what she came up with. Once again, thank you so much for hanging in there with me. I really appreciate the time that you spend with me. I hope you have a beautiful day and a wonderful week, and I look forward to seeing you in my next video. Thank you. Bye. It was the only foundation that I saw at, um, okay, I can't remember what I'm going to say. Anyway, this is a nice afford, anyway, any, anyway, this is a affordable cream foundation. Cream makeup, right? Cream, okay, cream makeup, is that the topic? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> broad, broads, oh my gosh. 100% cream cosmetics. Is it 100%? I need a teleprompter.